Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the mankind and all that exist. And may peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his family and companions. A very good morning to distinguished professors and honorable guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nanda. I will be your host for today's uh, public lecture. It is of our great pleasure to welcome you to a public lecture of, on tectonic and craftsmanship of Indonesia Pavilion at the 14th International Architecture Exhibition, La Biennale di Venezia. And uh, please welcome our guest, guest professor for today's lecture. Um, his name is Mr. Satya Disopandi. Um, he's an architect um, at Indra Tatalaras. Um, uh, and uh, but, but before uh, he's an architect, architectural scholar, lecturer, and creator. Um, and after studying architecture in Bandung and Singapore, he co-founded the architectural firm in the Tata Laras in Bogor in 2003. And he currently teaches Indonesian architectural history at the School of Design at Universitas Pelita Harapan in Karawaci, Tangerang. Um, Setia Disopandi is independently researching, archiving, writing about architecture with a focus on architects and architectural works from the 20th century Indonesia. He's been a contributor to the Modern Asian Architecture Network, AMAAN, uh, since 2007 and to the Modern Southeast, Southeast Asia Architecture Project since 2015. He's the author of Sejarah Arsitektur Sebuah Pengantar, published in 2013, and Friedrich Silaban, an extended biography of the most prominent Indonesian modern architect of the 20th century, published in 2017. Uh, he's also co-curated several exhibitions, such as the Indonesian Pavilion at the International Architecture Exhibition in Venice in 2014, Tropicality Revisited 2015 at the Deutsches Architecture Museum Frankfurt, uh, Friedrich Silaban 2017 at the National Gallery of Indonesia, Occupying Modernism at Kopi Manyar Jakarta 2019, and most recently, Apa Itu Ami, a, retros a retrospective of Arsitek Muda Indonesia 1989 to 2020. In 2017, he launched architectureindonesia.org, a virtual museum and archive repository of Indonesian architecture with Afianti Arman, Nadia Rinandi, and Ria Febrianti. Okay, um, next slide, please. Uh, so this is these are the, the books uh, he wrote. Then I think you can find it in uh, online books or offline books bookstore and next one is um, uh, I would like to invite before we begin I would like to invite Dr. Julianto Purwono Prihat Maji the head of undergraduate program uh, in in architecture faculty of civil engineering and uh, planning Universitas Islam Indonesia screen and time is yours Paji Okay, thank you, Bu Nanda. Um, so, distinguished guests, uh, cannot speak or speaker, uh, Pak Stanley Disopandi, juga Ibu Bapak dosen yang saya hormati, and uh, my beloved student for design studio. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, all. So, here is this uh, week five in our term before uh, midterm. So it's uh, 
it's a honor to to invite uh, or Mas Chung, yeah. So I think it's a long time not see you, Mas Chung. So <laughs> I'm maybe we meet in. Yes. It, yes. Wow. Aduh, aku ya. Pak Aji kayaknya yang. Bukan saya ya, Pak Aji. Iya, yeah, kayaknya Pak Aji yang freeze. <laughs> oh, freeze, Pak Aji. Oke. Okay. Ini Pak Aji. Oke. Okay. Uh, dia lagi senyum terus. <laughs> oh, ya. okay. Sambil saya menyapa Bapak, menunggu Pak Aji The, uh, koneksinya. Oke. 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 Run of the new curriculum, yeah, K, K20. Uh, so this is his uh, second semester that we run or new curriculum. Yeah. So uh, please uh, keep your sights, Pak Tung, yeah, about the tectonic and craftsmanship. I still keep, I still keep your your book with my fifty craft. Uh, I hope uh, maybe. Uh, Nia. Wah sayang sekali. Putus lagi Pak Ji ya? Hah. Iya. Oke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ya. Oh. ya Pak Ji. We will okay. help Pak Ji yeah. will turn off the video. Oh maybe ha huh? Pak Ji maybe. Ya. Yeah. Oh pun ada. Oke okay. thank you very much. Pak Aji, as our head of undergraduate program, okay. Um, so I would like to welcome all the uh, distinguished professors and lecturers uh, from Design Studio 2 and also uh, Tectonic and Craftsmanship uh, uh, course. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us, and also all our uh, beloved students, uh, mostly from 2020 batch. Okay, um, this course will be uh, the supporting lecture will be very much uh, uh, relevant to what uh, you are studying now, Design Studio Two and Design Studio, and also Tectonic and Craftsmanship course. Yeah. So therefore, today's supporting lecture exactly expected to be able to give you knowledge and inspirations that contribute to the learning process of the students to be able to learn how to creatively design emphasizing on material characteristics and craftsmanship okay thank you without further ado please pak setiadi or um, popular, popularly called pak cucung please <laughs> start your uh, your presentation. Okay, thank you so much. So honored to be here. Uh, good morning, everyone. Bunanda, Pak Aji, and uh, professors and students. It's so honored, and I'm so very, very delighted to be to be speaking uh, in uh, for Universitas Islam Indonesia. I I'm a big fan of Pak Aji and also Pak Refi. <laughs> uh, one of the first. Uh, interviewees that we visited when we got the job to design the Indonesian Pavilion in 2014. Wow. So this book is also a, actually a compilation of so many uh, distinguished work by Indonesian scholars, especially by Ajay and mm -hmm. so, uh, so I'm going to share my screen now. Um, sure. Yes. And yeah, actually, this is something very, very old work of ours. And I'm, I'm actually speaking and, and, and sharing on behalf of the whole team, especially uh, Bu Afianti, uh, Robin Hartanto, uh, Pak David Utama, who was back then, was the head of the department of the UPH, sector UPH, and Mas Apep, Mas Ahmad Ardiana. We, we, we gather as a team uh, during the 2013 call for, uh, for uh, competition for the first ever Indonesian pavilion for, uh, in, the, in the International Architecture Exhibition in, in Venice Biennale. 
that was a very, very interesting experience for us. And not only for our team, but also for the Indonesian architectural scene at the time, because it's the first time that we are enabled uh, to be present in the, in the international scene. Probably the first Indonesian participation was not through the national participation, but through the, the one and only Paeko Prawoto. He was invited probably back uh, 15 years ago in, uh, in the series of exhibition. But as a national pavilion, Indonesia, the first, uh, the first time that we got in is, is when we, uh, when, when uh, Remco has stated uh, and invited us, Indonesia, as, uh, directly as uh, one of the national participation. And uh, the, the most interesting thing that I can share probably about how Remco has uh, a, took a little bit different path when designing the theme for the exhibition. Because previously, Architectural Biennale, especially in Venice, was, uh, was mostly about how art architects express themselves as designers. So most of the works presented before uh, the, 13, the 13 editions of the Venice Biennale for Architecture was uh, revolved around the idea of uh, interpreting um, a theme and the architects or the national participation develop uh, design or, or something like artistic installation to respond to that theme. So it was largely artistic and um, uh, revolving around the idea of how architecture being presented as like seemingly like artworks. So it was a light headed kind of uh, event, but uh, Rampos took a different path by, by mentioning about uh, expecting national participation to share about their experience 100 years of architectural development in, uh, in their own countries. So he is established three, uh, three separate exhibitions. Actually, it's a, uh, the event itself, it's a theme after the, the so-called fundamentals by Ram Kohas. Inside the Venice Biennale of the 14 architectural, uh, architectural exhibition, he established three uh, big part of the exhibition. The first one is called Absorbing Modernity, which we took part in is uh, the theme for the national participation. So the, uh, the exhibits will be by uh, national participations. Every country is invited in the event was supposed to re respond to that theme. The second uh, exhibition is the called Elements of Architecture headed by himself and the, the theme of the Office of Metropolitan Architecture. So developed by his own firm, by Ram Polhas himself and the team. And the third one is uh, he invited uh, scholars all over the world to respond to, to themes specific to Italy. So he dedicated uh, a long row of, uh, of uh, gallery space in Arsenale in, in Venice. Um, and to appoint uh, different scholars, uh, both from Italy no, no, and also from outside, to respond to a lot of things or dig up uh, interesting themes to be, to be developed as a uh, small pavilions with specific on uh, uh, stories. But all of this, the three of these things are actually revolved around the history of architecture, especially modern architecture. What kind of things that we have gone through for the past 100 years, since to, uh, 1914 to uh, 2014, and what kind of things that we have, uh, have been doing as a discipline, as architects, as designers, or even uh, in a bigger in a bigger scope, probably as a, a human a human being, what kind of things that we prepare ourselves to 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 be able to to live or survive in this world in urbanized world. So for the elements of architecture, Carl has uh, did this kind of thing. He uh, actually we did something very, very simple in terms of, of theme or development of the idea. He simply put uh, elements of buildings, actually not elements of architecture, it's, um, but about buildings. So he, he dismantled the buildings based on the elements. 
let's say about walls, uh, windows, openings, doors, and even closets and ceilings and every type, everything that we we uh, we uh, we simply uh, regard as essentials to buildings. And he he developed a, 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 a range of museum-like environment for uh, in the Giardinia and in the main pavilion. And uh, wash everything, our every single space in the in the in the venue, uh, to be filled with uh, the evolution of elements and, uh, uh, from 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 buildings that we he can get his hand on, um, just like in in one of the exhibit telling about the evolution of roof or variation of uh, roof forms. Uh, we can also uh, witness uh, Indonesian traditional roof forms in, in, in the form of models he got from, I think, from Leiden uh, and got exhibited along with uh, hundreds of other roof forms from all over the world. And for the national participation team, uh, as much as 65 national participation uh, are expected to respond to a, a single team. Called has asked us to examine key moments from a century of modernization. So uh, we we kind of uh, expected to to share our experience in dealing with a uh, lot of things, like the First World War, Second World War, uh, the colonial era, the post-colonial era, the moment when probably we went through a a, a hard time doing uh, dealing with the authoritarian periods. A lot of countries there have. Gone through that kind of things, and we also at at, at the end were uh, somehow uh, expected to to reveal how diverse material cultures back then, back in the early twentieth century, and and eventually um, while while things got into more intense uh, by the end of twentieth century, and. Almost every country in the world has become transformed as a generic modernity into a specific one. How how come uh, this kind of thing happen in in a short uh, in, in in such short uh, historical period? That is the thing that uh, expected from every pavilion to to came up with. Um, it was a kind of big theme to be to be delivered. Actually, if, uh, to be honest, uh, speaking that uh, this kind of thing actually belongs to museums rather than to, to a, a six month uh, temporary uh, exhibition actually. This was un unprecedented and it's a bold move by Rempel Haas, but it's also very, very interesting because it's not only bringing uh, uh, architects together, but also bringing architects and architectural historians and even historians political historians, economic historians, or, or cultural historians to, to, to team up and to, to at least to begin to talk about whatever we, we deem as our process of being a, a modern society. So it's very interesting indeed. And uh, this is the Monditalia Arsenal. I also uh, work, uh, working on, on the same team. But uh, this more uh, dedicated into uh, the processes that happen in, in Italy, of course. And for the absorbing modernity uh, introduction, uh, Rempel has also defy, uh, uh, designed a pavilion in, 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 uh, in the very front of, of, the, of, the, of the venue. And to have uh, like a collage. So it's a very, very overwhelming kind of exhibition, actually, from the beginning up to the end. I spent like uh, two weeks in, in Venice to, to explore everything and I, I couldn't manage to finish it. It's for, so overwhelming because every uh, single pavilion, including the small pavilion up to the biggest pavilion, like in uh, the one that belonged to China and Italy, it was so overwhelming and so overloaded with materials and every country presented their 100 years of hist architectural history. And it's so... Uh, so diverse, so 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 uh, very very overwhelming, and so overloaded with materials, uh, informations, and and so many twists in history uh, and and architectural forms. That's what I can, I can say about this uh, very very big and monumental project. But the most interesting thing for for me actually is about how 
every country is uh, have was having a, a wonderful time. I can say that to to be able to to reflect back on whatever we had uh, in as our, our past, our 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 own development of architectural uh, architectural uh, history. It's like in, in the, the uh, one of the interesting things I will I will I will share with you. Uh, it is a Italian pavilion. It's called grafting. Grafting uh, defined by the, its creator, uh, Gino Suki. Uh, it's about experience of, uh, it, uh, by Italian architects to deal with the overwhelming uh, amount of historic buildings in their cities. Also, we, as we know, Italy was uh, uh, almost like exclusive uh, uh, heritage protectors of the Roman Empire. So every single of their cities are actually built up by Roman uh, Empire in the past to 2000 years ago, and it's overwhelmingly uh, Roman cities. So it's very difficult for modern or contemporary architects to, to build buildings just like that because it's all protected and so packed up with, with ruins and, and also uh, still functioning good condition Roman buildings. So uh, the, the modernization of, uh, of, uh, of uh, contemporary architecture in, in Italy was uh, dealing lots, lots of experience dealing with uh, the so-called grafting. Grafting is uh, something you can you 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 build or you uh, you you paste on something uh, uh, on like a, yeah, it needs transplantation, a graft, like a touching uh, a tiny plot of project uh, boundary into something else into something living, into something protected, and into something old enough to be considered as uh, heritage. And uh, I was really, really, uh, we were very, very ner nervous at the, at the first time in, in 2013 because we didn't know how to expect about uh, others, uh, uh, pavilions, uh, national pavilions uh, will we'll, uh, we'll come up with because we don't have experience to, to be in par in, in those uh, big cultural culture uh, name in architectural world. But it's very surprising that uh, it seems that uh, every country uh, uh, have the, the liberty to, to, to design whatever they think it's uh, uh, necessary or, or uh, we can really uh, see how, how serious or how, uh, the national pavilions will will react to this kind of uh, uh, to this kind of opportunity. Uh, Italy was uh, because of uh, being a host. It seems uh, seems to be very very serious and very 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 uh, conscious about uh, about what they had as uh, as a team to be to be shared in 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 the in the in the event. But the very interesting. Uh, Proposition was made by the Russian uh, pavilion. It's called Fair Enough, and it's designed uh, so much like the uh, Pameran Bahan Bangunan. <laughs> like it's like a trade show. So it uh, contains a uh, contains a small smaller pavilions inside, just like they are selling something. But actually, they are not selling anything at all. But it's uh, modeled after uh, very very. Uh, Pretty much like trade show, like a pameran computer, like pameran bahan bangunan di JHCC. It's uh, uh, in every small pavilion, they, they offer something uh, very thematically uh, Russian in uh, in their view. It's like the they also offer uh, uh, some themes or some uh, specific trends or specific occurrences happen in uh, along with the uh, Russian experiment in, in modern architecture. And uh, uh, very, very fun and very, very enlightening. And it's also very informative in a way. So uh, from these two pavilion, we got to think about, uh, because we, we, we didn't know this back then when, when we, we designed the Indonesian pavilion, but it's very, very interesting to see and to reflect of what whatever the 
the other pavilions think about themselves and uh, to, and also help us to think about how we see our own architectural heritage, especially the, the 100 years of architectural Indonesian modern architectural history. And there's another example actually about how relaxed or how we see ourselves as a national pavilions. Brazilian pavilion is something like a very, very uh, nonchalant kind of uh, exhibition. They're so confident about uh, on their uh, modernist architecture, the Brazilians are, they're so proud about, about, about their, their modern architecture until now, of course. We can see a lot of big names came not, uh, not only from European countries, but also from Brazil and Mexico because they are very good at dealing with the uh, uh, reinforced concrete. And they're so, so relaxed, they're so confident that they simply wash out their national pavilion with only photographs. And uh, this, this very, very simple and very, very uh, Mahasiswa-like <laughs> installation, uh, not even first year, I think as uh, first year students are doing better than this in, in terms of designing uh, exhibitions. But this is so simple and this is so so cheap to, uh, to do. They just simply put out the, the best example of modernist architecture in the 100 years of uh, Brazilian architectural history. They're still blown us uh, away with their with the photographs, simple photographs. The Japan Pavilion is a bit different. It's very, very uh, meticulously uh, scholarly work done by Professor Nakatani, a good friend of mine. Um, he designed a, a pavilion, it consists like a, a, a warehouse. It's more like an archive, um, a very raw archive, not even a library, telling about what, uh, what uh, Japanese architects did during, the, during uh, between the, the, the Osaka Expo and the oil crisis in the 1970s. A very, very scholarly and his, uh, his, uh, historically uh, place. Uh, team uh, pavilion, and he he de deploy a lot of examples experimentation by Japanese architect during that time. And uh, one very interesting, uh, my favorite is actually from the Chilean pavilion about the monolith. The, the, the theme is revolved around a project uh, they did in the seventies about the experimental uh, housing prefab uh, reinforced concrete in the seventies. And, and they bring a, 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 a big piece of prefab material for, from Chile to be delivered in the Arsenale. And they design, uh, they recreate a few rooms, which the, the typical uh, Chilean middle and lower class society who live in, in, in those kind of buildings. So a simple, uh, uh, system of uh, construction, which developed into a very big project as a housing, a national housing project in Chile. So it's very, very touching uh, how these kind of simple architectural elements, very, very simple uh, architectonic uh, elements, what bring up the, can, can incite a lot of lives inside the buildings because of the massiveness and also the, the rigorousness of the, the housing project in, in, in Chile. And Korean Pavilion, who won, actually who won the, the best prize for the, the best pavilion in, in the event, uh, is a very, very uh, touching reflection of a national consciousness about how the two Koreas, now divided by politics, can become came together for a six month period in the National Pavilion of the Korea in the, in the Venice Biennale. And the interesting thing about the, 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 the pavilion is that actually the, the, the South Korean part, the South Korean curators were, were proposing a joint uh, uh, curating and designing um, and they proposed the North Korea to, to join them for, for to, to, be, to be together in this event, but it was actually, uh, eventually turned, turned down, but they went on with the idea to, to, to represent the both Korea in one single pavilion. It was very touching and it, and it eventually uh, won the, the jury's heart. But it's very interesting to see all of these uh, proposals um, and to, to reflect our own uh, take 
uh, on our own uh, modern architectural history. The very big question at that time in 2013, when we got the first uh, call for competition, is how to represent Indonesian architecture. Uh, and the, the most in underlying, uh, the most important underlying question about this is actually, is there something so-called Indonesian architecture anyway? Of course, in 1982, we have a second Congress of Indonesian Institute of Architects discussing about Indonesian architecture as a brand, as a name, as an idea, as a something that being sold after for, for so many years. But we're not really sure what this Indonesian architecture is, is all about. Is it something that it belongs to modern tradition or is it something that belongs to more and more uh, vernacular and, and traditional architecture? Or is it something in between? And nobody can really tell the, the exact uh, answer to this question. And, and the second question is how do we, we respond to, to absorbing modernity put out by, by, the, the, by the curator? Are we really are are we really absorbing modernity, or are we really uh, doing something more like sponging kind of things, like like sucking every kind of influence into our our uh, tradition of building building uh, building architecture? So this is a, a very big question that has to be has to be has to be uh, answered eventually in the in the exhibition, or at least uh, we simply need uh, some kind of proposition to to be discussed further. And the second, uh, second, the second uh, uh, response is actually that we, what is what actually what we did uh, at that time, because we cannot really answer everything in, in a very short uh, period of time, and instead we we choose to 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 question a lot of things and to 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 utilize those questions to as a reflection to ourselves as to begin. Uh, Architectural discourse in our own country, instead of being just a representation of our country to the to the to the global society, and uh, so we begin uh, putting out questions like, uh, what are the fundamentals in our course? Uh, actually, we are we are so lean to the political timeline as our our guide to understand our own architecture, or do architects really really depend on on economics in terms of architectural historical development. Are we really keen into, uh, uh, into ideas? Have we got uh, so many experiences to, to, to explore ideas? Or probably we have so many styles to, to experiment it with uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the last 100 years. Are, or are we really uh, talking about so many uh, uh, issues on, on so, many, so, so many attention on identities? And those was really, really, really puzzling, but uh, I was so keen in, in, in developing an idea over uh, so many influences can be influential in architectural development. And uh, during that time, we, we went through an article uh, written by our respective colleague, Pak Mahatmanto, in a book published by uh, Pusat Dokumentasi Arsitektur, uh, the so-called Tegang Dentang. This was actually a, a hundred years of uh, Indonesian architectural history, but written by various author doing uh, like a, a mosaic, like a patches of an undeveloped uh, narrative. And they began to question a lot of things like, um, like Korpasia was invited in to uh, explain about the the precedent of uh, the Indonesian modern architecture by the perspective of a, a, a Dutch architect. So it was indebted a lot of uh, tradition uh, back to the Dutch architects, which not really, really satisfied satisfy because it, it seems that we are uh, uh, adept to those uh, Dutch architects, which politically incorrect, of course. But uh, some uh, some of the writers also mentioned about the importance of traditional architecture. We, we that also influenced the Dutch architects themselves. But uh, Pak Mahatmanto was questioning about uh, an episode uh, by uh, Henry McLean Pond about uh, the, the, the concerns uh, among Dutch architects, especially McLean Pond and, and, and Thomas Carson at that time, 
uh, about the, the the diminishing qualities and and and, and skill by the the great Indonesian craftsman. He was questioning about the where have all the skills to build the great structures and uh, the traditional buildings gone? Have the Dutch or the, the, the modern technology have squashed them away from the face of Indonesia? Have their, uh, their skill and also tradition became extinct? So we, we began to think about uh, an angle which, uh, which may be uh, interesting to, and productive to dig up as a theme for the exhibition. So in that way, we are not, uh, not focusing on the development of ideas, not developing on the figures of architects, not, uh, not center our exhibition on in terms of uh, uh, change of, of, of monumental buildings, but instead we, we, we can go back to the fundamentals of, of the architectural creation, which is uh, the production itself, which is the skill, the technological set, and, and also the materials that created uh, the very first investment uh, of, uh, of architectural projects can, can begin with. So instead of putting up the names of putting up uh, projects along the timeline, we, we, we uh, figure out a system, a matrix of materials and a uh, um, uh, historical timeline to begin with the exhibition. So we begin to, uh, to see the pictures on how experts, projects, architects, and events can came out together and uh, form a uh, quite interesting narrative. And we also uh, have a kind of uh, uh, structure to begin uh, picturing the design of the pavilion. So because after all, uh, Venice Biennale is, is not so, so intellectual to be considered as like a museum, it's actually a beauty show. It's a beauty contest uh, by itself. So we have to be, to be balanced on this too, uh, because our audience is not only architects, not only architectural historian, but also the general public tourists visiting Venice, of course. So we begin by, by uh, dividing, uh, not based on theme, but we, we, we think of, of uh, Indonesian architecture as a history of materials, not history of architects, not history of architectural ideas, but a uh, history of materials. The material itself became uh, the protagonist, the, the, the main role, uh, not as objects, but as subjects, uh, as if they're, uh, as if they're, they, they involve actively uh, inside the Indonesian architectural history. And, uh, but by putting them into a timeline, which uh, picture how these materials have their moments uh, being regarded as uh, something uh, specific uh, associated with the uh, greatness of the long line of tradition. But sometimes they also uh, being associated as something that is despised by society, being criticized by being scrutinized. So uh, instead of having them as a glorious and celebrated uh, uh, stories, but this material represents a lot of things inside and, 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 and by, by learning about them, uh, namely uh, the wood, uh, stone, bricks, uh, steel or, or metals, uh, concrete and bamboo, we will learn about how these materials can contribute to, to, to design projects and what kind of uh, consequences that we have uh, being those material associated with, with something very, very specific. So uh, yes, this kind of thing that uh, actually occupied uh, our less than one year uh, research project. And um, we began to see that kind of uh, uh, positioning and matrix of, of, the, of the research can really uh, reveal a lot of things that, that uh, came through our architectural uh, uh, architectural 
pallets of in, in projects. So I'm going to show you some of the clips that we did for, for, the, for the exhibition. So because our, our pavilion is uh, consists only of screen projections, actually. We have seven screens uh, pictured in the a very, very big empty uh, gallery space of the in the Arsenal, 100, uh, 550 square meter. We project seven, uh, seven screens, uh, seven transparent glass screens, uh, which uh, tells about the about the stories of the six materials plus plus one uh, one big introduction to to the team. So I'm going to show you uh, briefly because it's uh, eight minutes long each, so it takes almost uh, an hour to finish all. But it tells uh, shortly about uh, about the story of the the six materials along the 100 years of architectural history in approximately each eight minutes. So this is an introduction of the first, uh, the general introduction to the, to the, to the exhibition. But to skip forward to the, the first one, we talk about timber as one of the uh, inevitable um, essential building material that has been used since the earliest time in the human society, not only Indonesia, of course, but sometimes in back in the, in the 1920s, in the 1920s, it seems that the use of wood was restricted uh, on all uh, and associated with something that is uh, mostly vernacular or, or, or or pre-boomy or, or, or native rather than a colonial because the colonial architecture or the Dutch built mostly uh, with bricks and, and, and sometimes with concrete and leave the openings and the frames and the non-structural non elements uh, with wood. So it's become, uh, became like a dichotomy between the bricks and uh, the wood in the use of uh, uh, yeah, use materials. But the interesting thing is the twist, you know, in the twist made by the Henry McLean Pond in his uh, experimental projects, when he tried to combine a lot of things, uh, combine the best of the two worlds between the West and the East using the materials that is commonly associated with the vernacular architecture. But uh, combined with the interestingly modern and also European kind of uh, industrialized constructions, so we we uh, we saw a, a kind of merging or synthesis. They, they would say uh, of uh, two different worlds in terms of construction and the ma and materials, and, be, and and create something that is unprecedented in terms of expression. So the conflicting uh, experience or, or expression of the building like the Bandung, uh, ITB Bandung, Aula ITB, was kind of a refreshment or uh, something that is quite, we can consider quite innovative. And also at the same time, uh, very eye-opening in terms of, uh, of uh, or, or something that is not in line with the general uh, modern architectural history. We also an experiment by, by Thomas Karsten about the about the the way we perceive uh, building typologies like 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 Limasan or or Pendopo, and to be used as a modern uh, theater building dedicated for uh, the refinement of the Japanese uh, performing arts in in Sobokarti theater, and and so on and so on. So every every material has its own history and uh, its own uh, experience of being used or being manipulated by architects to serve certain kind of things, certain kind of association, certain kind of uh, expression intended by the, the architects. And and go on and go on. And it's also uh, the same frame, but not exactly the same uh, uh, flow, 
happens also to, to other materials, not only in wood. Stones was also one, or regarded was one of the most uh, primal materials in, in Indonesia because it has been used for, for, for centuries to build uh, monumental structures. And, and as well as being used in, in, in contemporary or recent materials, used to be associated with something solid, something very, very uh, restricted to religious buildings. Stones eventually, I'm going to skip to now. Uh, stones and natural stones are uh, widely used uh, nowadays more as, as index, as something that is indicate or, or giving us uh, experience, symbols of, of um, of uh, architectural buildings being being associated with local or mat uh, or natural, instead of having them as structures, uh, the use of uh, natural stones are more now uh, now more and more associated with something uh, as a skin skin deep expression of architecture being uh, natural uh, being part of the natural world. So we, we combine a lot of stories on a lot of uh, un seemingly unrelated uh, case studies to be, to, be, to be put in the timeline of uh, architectural history. So we can see it uh, kind of uh, differently. Uh, brick also the, shared the same fate as, as, as the building material like stones used to be uh, associated or even uh, restricted to, to buildings with uh, religious values. But now, nowadays, we, we, we tend to see a building with uh, bricks are more about its expression rather than its structural properties, like uh, uh, the, the complex uh, Universitas Indonesia was designed in, 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 in the middle of uh, 1980s. Uh, use bricks expression as something uh, associated with uh, the name Indonesia. So associated with uh, as an index, as an expression, aesthetic expression, as well as cultural and national uh, identity instead of being as, uh, as uh, constructional or structural materials. So we see this, this kind of uh, fluctuation of association of materials. So it happens to almost all the major uh, architectural materials. And architects like Andramati even uh, stretch the limit of, of the properties of the material being, uh, being a structural, a very solid and also very, very heavy material and, and design bricks to be, to be an element of a, a fabric-like kind of uh, structure not even the structural uh, components, but as uh, something that is, uh, was, uh, was uh, tra traditionally associated with uh, something light, something, uh, something uh, flowing, something, something which is not carrying a, a structural properties. This is another example from Adiponomo, which share the same kind of uh, intention like Andra Martin. Uh, be, uh, uh, making the bricks play into a kind of uh, 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 how to say uh, uh, like a, a, a trick actually, because brick uh, in this in this uh, in this case is not playing the same role as the one in 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 religious temples, Hindu Buddhist temples, but is merely uh, designed as something that is seemingly uh, proper uh, structurally uh, position, but it's actually more uh, as an expression of uh, aesthetic and associated with with uh, with with the local uh, local identity. So I'm going to straightforward about about the to the steel. Steel is uh, also uh, has the same kind of thing. Uh, being used as uh, being imported as a luxurious material back in early 20th century. Steel was 
uh, came to Indonesia as a material of uh, luxury instead of a structural properties like the uh, like we like we we associated as as the moment uh, because steel wasn't uh, steel profile was not produced in uh, locally in Indonesia uh, not not uh, not before 1970s. Krakatau still was established in, in the early 1970s and was uh, initially producing only steel uh, reinforcement bars. So uh, the rebars are, are uh, essential, of course, for, for building reinforced concrete. But before that, we still considered steel as something very, very luxurious materials and, and was regarded also uh, as, as uh, something that should be uh, should be part of the aesthetic element instead of being simply structural elements. So uh, buildings like uh, like uh, like bank buildings, like uh, uh, just like uh, the cathedral uh, spires here in Jakarta, was entirely designed uh, steel as an aesthetic element instead of uh, structural elements. And also uh, because of the uh, the popularity of the cast in uh, steel and iron big iron elements was uh, imported as an aesthetic elements as well as a structural elements to be to be to be shown to the public just like the in the Yogyakarta uh, Kesultanan Yogyakarta the use of one uh, a lot of elements are from 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 imported steel uh, as the as uh, they are building elements. But interestingly, uh, steel came uh, not uh, not only as a, not only as a structural materials, but they also develop as something that is uh, associated with aesthetics and and identity. And sometimes it plays an important part. Uh, in symbolism, like in the 70s and, and, and 60s, when we had uh, massive projects uh, during the, the uh, during democracy terpimpin era, when uh, when Sukarno held a lot of uh, national wide project, monumental projects, using modern architecture and modern materials. So his speech and his uh, narrative put out in the public was. Uh, intermingling with the images from, from the projects that uh, he, he was uh, promoting and uh, developing a kind of sense of nationalism through those kind of buildings. But recently it still had its gain in terms of uh, aesthetic without, without actually, uh, without actually uh, being associated as a nationalism uh, or nationalistic uh, uh, discourses. They are simply being 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 uh, being held up as aesthetic ele elements, as well as something that is more promising in terms of environmentally friendly buildings. Because still, being uh, uh, being a bit uh, a bit a bit uh, uh, energy consuming to 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 be made, but it's long longer lasting than, than reinforced concrete because, because steel can be reused, can be recycled into something else or being used again as uh, another uh, new building materials for another projects. So concrete also has shared a, a similar fate being developed as a material came uh, through colonial projects. Uh, Reinforced concrete had been perfected uh, in Europe in, in as, as late as uh, early 20th century, but then almost immediately employed in, in, in uh, Hindia Belanda as early as nine, 1906 uh, through, the, through the, the project of Bank Indonesia the Java's Bank, and now it's called the Bank, uh, Museum Bank Indonesia, but it was then built as a reinforced concrete structure, despite 
its expression uh, uh, expression we are using the neoclassical uh, style buildings but actually those buildings built uh, in the early 20th century are almost all of them are uh, modern building uh, structures and it was so popular because it's uh, offer uh, very sturdy materials and very 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 handy logistically it was superior because it calls for a limited uh, amount of uh, natural resources and those kind of building can be can be applied almost everywhere in indonesia because of the ease of uh, transportation using uh, cement sacks uh, um, uh, steel rebars and everything can be developed uh, quite easily and uh, the the establishment of the first uh, cement plant in in the archipelago in in southeast asia in padang was uh, um, more and more strengthening the position of the use the use of reinforced concrete in the region the second uh, sec, uh, the second uh, cement plant was established in in thailand throughout the southeast asia and just took only a few decades to to be to be to be considered as the main uh, building materials and it uh, reinforced concrete gained a very very uh, patriotic momentum during the democracy that pimpin in the 60s president sukarno was uh, uh, being an engineer himself trained as an architect and civil engineer he was championing the use of reinforced concrete and associated reinforced concrete and steel and uh, copper and everything uh, associated with, with modern building materials into his speech. So people, uh, Indonesian, Indonesian uh, citizens are, are keen, keen to, to listen to whatever he said about this kind of monopoly projects. And while he was uh, stressing the importance of the use of uh, new modern materials, though uh, they were, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, largely imported, but it was associated with the pat patriotism and also the, the nation building and anti-colonialism uh, sentiments at the time. So it was kind of interesting to see uh, how Indonesian publics uh, considered uh, the names like uh, Ruseno, uh, Wiratman, Sutami as as in par as national heroes as well as the uh, freedom fighters back in from from the earlier periods so engineers architects are considered uh, a very very patriotic role and especially when when we we got the chance to build the uh, enormous structure made of steel and reinforced concrete um, in the 60s and 70s so it was a, 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 roller coaster, a roller coaster of, of uh, association of uh, architectural materials throughout the 20th century. So we had episodes of uh, these materials being, being, being considered as heroic, patriotic, or, uh, or on the contrary, being a very, very pollutant and, and uh, carbon, emis uh, carbon emitting uh, materials which endanger the, the environment. So uh, architects have been, have been manipulating and being immersed in this kind of uh, associations. We, we have, we're actually almost clueless or, or even uh, helpless to, 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 to be in part of this uh, discourse uh, other than using the, the, the the, the ready-made association and the, the, the ready uh, to use uh, this kind of uh, building materials. Uh, but we had a really, really uh, small chance to really alter the association and also the, 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 the effective use of the effective messaging of using of the material to the general public. We largely consumers of this kind of uh, uh, images and associations. And the most uh, interesting one is actually put it at the last one because bamboo was considered as, as almost almost less uh, as a 
as a building material because uh, in the first uh, the first uh, few decades in the 20th century bamboo was considered as something uh, inferior and are more more associated as uh, temporary structures or even associated as a building uh, building um, not worthy to be mentioned as architectural uh, pieces. But interestingly, bamboo was uh, was abundant in Indonesia, and uh, and it was one of the most versatile uh, organic material, not only for building materials, but also for for everything else. But bamboo fit in architectural projects was so limited to to uh, to in terms of uh, modern architectural projects. And the interesting thing uh, happened during the 1920s when bamboo was associated as a culprit for the, uh, the outbreak of, uh, of the pestilence in, especially in East Java, because uh, there's so many buildings, uh, poorly, poorly uh, constructed buildings in the in small towns in Java was infested with with rats and they carry uh, a pass and transfer it to human. So uh, because the Dutch government was so paranoid about this situation, so they 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 held a, a massive campaigning to to ban the use of uh, poorly poorly pre prepared bamboo tubes as building material. But bamboo uh, was uh, continued to to be to be used as um, temporary building materials to design festivities uh, like the Pasar Gambir, Pasar Malam all over Indonesia. The most uh, the most uh, prestigious one is actually Pasar Gambir. But again, bamboo was not considered um, serious enough to be used as uh, as uh, uh, permanent buildings and more and more uh, associated as uh, as uh, buildings with uh, impermanent uh, status, but but bamboo was actually considered as uh, the future of building materials because of its ease of uh, 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 non-industrial organic uh, materials, and we still have so many uh, so many potential to be to be discovered from bamboo in the future. That's why it's a place at the at the at the very end of our 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 presentation of the Indonesian pavilion because we, we are not claiming that bamboo is uh, not, not uh, is solely an Indonesian to 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 claim as in one of its heritage because bamboo is also uh, uh, also being used uh, all over the world but Indonesia has so one of the uh the, the indonesia actually has the, the 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 most diverse bamboo species in the world so it's still uh, for us uh to discover in the in the near future to to utilize this kind of uh, variety of bamboos in not only in buildings but on but uh into into everything else So we put up a lot of examples of how uh, recently bamboo being used and to see the example as something that is uh, really, really promising for the future and for Indonesian architects to, to explore and to offer the world. While we are still also keeping the tradition alive, struggling to, to keep the, the tradition alive being threatened by the sink roof on this kind of thing. What explained by, by our, our colleague, Gede uh, Krishna, about the, the crisis that you have in the northern and the middle part of Bali, about the, the ex, uh, expanding use of uh, sink, atap sink, the metal roof, replacing the bamboo because of the scarcity of the bamboo forest being replaced by tangerine plantation in, in Bali. So the, the 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 crisis is actually a multi 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 dimensional. Not only about not only not simply about architects reviews doing uh, or doing construction in, in organic materials, 
or local materials, but also it's involves the economy or, or the livelihood of a lot of people or uh, involves uh, the, the welfare of, of so many communities to be considered. So it's multidimensional, not only not leaving architects to, to the one party to be blamed. So I'm going to share again back to my slides here. So that was our presentation of, of the how 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 we tell the stories about Indonesian architectural history. And was it was actually a long process because we, we tend to get a lot of uh, resentment or, or rejection from initially from, from the jury because we got into the finals. We we got to to have a, uh, our our ideas presented in front of uh, in front of the competitors and to the general public, but it was a very inter interesting discussion and debate during during the final jury uh, judging, because we are the the only the only the only team who propose a very a very very unlikely team for a history. In, for a historical uh, a proposition, the other team was proposing about the, the 100 years of architectural history in terms of political uh, stages for the political development. The other team is not proposing a, a team at all because they, they they were so focusing about how how the Indonesian pavilion can be represented in very interesting architectural forms. Uh, regardless about regardless the the, the architectural uh, the, the the curatorial team, but our team this is the one who focus about creating a narrative about uh, 100 years of architecturally through the the eyes of craftsmanship. This is this is uh, the proposal the initial proposal of the winning the winning scheme, because we weren't we were not taught about the budget we we we. We ought to, to we want to fill up the, the very huge space in the arsenal uh, as much as possible using uh, so many so many projections to tell our stories in uh, uh, of over 100 years of architectural history. We we put out uh, 45 projectors uh, on on glass screens. It took uh, 11 glass cubicles, so every cubicle has three three panels. So it's very, very huge and very, very expensive. We don't know how much is this would cost, but we we uh, we estimate it would cost around no less than uh, ten billion rupiah at the time. And it was our our rough estimate. It's so so expensive. We we know about that. So when we got uh, actually selected, uh, we 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 were required to scale down almost half of it. We scaled down the, uh, it to 24 projectors without losing so many uh, stories that we would like to, to share. And uh, we have, uh, uh, we no longer have 11 cubicles. We only have uh, eight glass cubicles, uh, but we, we need a raised floor to, to make it, uh, to make the pavilion seems floating out of no, just see a lot of projection out of, uh, out of uh, thin air. So the, that was the idea of the, of the design. So uh, we we deploy those kind of uh, ideas uh, to to make the the visitors uh, focus on the on on whatever we project on on the on as videos rather than to to be distracted by the, by the design. So we want to uh, the, the the space uh, to be to be enabling that kind of experience rather than to to. To, to bombard the, the visitors with uh, acrobatic forms of uh, architectural forms. And, and after that, we, we are pushed and pushed uh, by, by the committee to scale down our, our design. We, uh, and we, we cooperated we, we, because we understand the difficulty of, of, uh, of managing this kind of thing for the first time because the, the ministry who, 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 is, who was the sponsor, the, the Ministry of Tourism at the time, uh, was also not uh, very aware about the magnitude of this kind of commission. Um, and, and again, uh, at some point, we are, we are 
uh, at the brink of, of collapsing the, the, the project because there are no certainty about the, the funding and also the how we're going to uh, raise that, that, that amount of money because I, finally we, we found out that the ministry, the, the government can only pay for, for half. Uh, and uh, the rest of the, the funding that uh, um, whatever the funding uh, will be, the government can only pay for half. That's the, the real issue. And we have to uh, make ourselves ready to, to, to raise our own funding for, for the rest of it. So uh, if, if we got to, to, to proceed with, with the with not, not so much money, we, we make a very huge compromise by, by scaling it down uh, to the version of the, if we know, have no allocated budget. So we simply make it narrow to a, a 16 projections and 16 screens in, into four cubicles. And we, 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 uh, we assume that we can uh, limit the, 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 the floor area um, to half, but was, it was actually not allowed by, by the uh, Venice Biennale uh, committee because it was appointed to us and we cannot change um, the venue uh, according to our will. It was already uh, decided, uh, pre-decided. So we can only work with whatever we got. So we, we struggle uh, a lot with that, but, we are kind of lucky that we we have a quite a solid uh, team, uh, curatorial team to to be to be presented. So we can actually play around with a lot of uh, kind of layouts, and being uh, um, being uh, glass as it's a uh, as it's a main uh, element for the pavilion. Uh, we can. We can simply order it from 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 uh, locally. It's we source it locally because uh, Italy, especially Venice, is one of the the best uh, glass uh, manufacturer in the world, and also fit to our our scheme because glass is one of the materials that uh, very 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 important in the def uh, definition of modern architecture, and we leave it out from the six materials that. Uh, that was in 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 uh, in the narrative, because glass was considered something very very uh, uh, industrial at, the, at at one end, and the other end, the glass is also being questioned as one of the uh, the most destructive uh, architectural material because prevent uh, a building to to use the natural ventilation and and relying so much on on the artificial mechanical uh, ventilation system, regardless the, 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 the climate and also the geographical condition. So glass is being put in the scrutiny and also being put on the uh, 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 investigation glass being questioned as something that is uh, uh, need to be, to be resolved before we can move on with, with, uh, with whatever we, we think is, um, uh, environmentally uh, uh, sound elements. So we, we did a lot of things without losing our, our focus to, to present the six materials. But, the, but at the end, we have to really, really uh, uh, negotiate and compromise. And we end up using only seven projectors. And this is the first one, even worse than even worse that the worst that scenario we only got. We only uh, managed to raise uh, less than 3 billion out of 10 billion projected at the beginning of the project. And it was largely um, paid by, uh, by donors, by, by, by not, not by government. Government can only provide less than half of it and supported by the Ministry of, not only the Ministry of Tourism and, 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 and Creative Industry, but also supported by the Ministry of uh, Education, and a large of it was uh, supported by uh, vendors, by building materials vendors, and some help from architects friends. And this is the, the almost final version of it. 
So we managed to put the eight screens, uh, three meters wide, 2.4 meters height in the middle of the empty uh, this space of Arsenale that was uh, dedicated for Indonesian Pavilion. And the interesting thing, we, we, uh, in the, during the process of the construction, we, 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 we got to see first-handedly the way that the uh, uh, Italian workers are doing something that is actually uh, uh, natural for them in terms of uh, industrial component materials. They use uh, glass. Uh, we designed all of this, but the way they work is was something that is uh, not not in our mind at the time because they eventually they use a spider kind of crane and only three people working there for the entire time. And mostly at three people, that sometimes it's only one people. <laughs> it was something that is not, not in our, uh, uh, our daily uh, experience doing construction in Indonesia, which, was, which, which, which is uh, uh, a labor in intensive, but uh, in Europe, it seems that we, they use they rely a lot of things using uh, um, uh, technology. This is uh, the the pavilion before it was uh, entirely finished. We add the safety bus and install the the projection, and this is the the last moment before it was uh, projected with the actual uh, videos. And these are the how it looks at the end when, when it was open. So the seven screens was simultaneously playing the, the videos that uh, I have shown you and uh, surrounded by the noise of being in the construction site. Very, very annoying at the time until one of the, uh, the, the neighboring pavilion protest to us and asked us to turn down the, the noise of the construction. So yeah, the result is was we, we of course we didn't get any kind of award, but at least being uh, being present and being uh, one of the the one who has a bigger uh, footprint and the one with nothing inside except glass and projection, we managed to to yeah got in the social map <laughs> because after all this is a beauty contest and popularity contest. We cannot compete with the China, which is it's a uh, very end of the arsenal with the uh, thousand of square meters, and we cannot compete with the elements uh, created by Remco Haas in the main pavilion. But at least we, we made our presence for the first time in in uh, in the Venice Biennale, and uh, uh, being uh, actively interacted with the, all the architectural, cultural, uh, globally. Uh, Please, uh, you can uh, please uh, throw me any question you like, and I will be gladly uh, show you some more if you like me to do, and some of uh, some of the slides that I have been uh, skipped to to limit my time. So uh, that's my presentation. I hope this. Uh, useful enough for every one of us here. Thank you so much. Bunanda, I give yeah. this back to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Pak Ju, Pastia uh, Pandi for a very inspiring presentation of 100 years of Indonesian architectural history through the eyes of craftsmanship. I think it's really comprehensive and I hope that all the students and our, our our uh, the lecturers, all the colleagues, uh, will learn much from this presentation. I think, and uh, congratulations for uh, completing the huge, huge, enormous project. Yeah, then you uh, interpreting the the theme that is, uh, what is it? Um, uh, uh, delivered by the domain curator, Rem Kulhas, and then. Uh, you also share about how do you, do you deal with the uh, the curatorial team of Indonesia had to deal with the 
uh, many constraints and then how to realize it and then presenting to the, the general public in, in Venezia. Okay, thank you so much. And I would like to invite students to, to pose some questions. Maybe it's a bit, I mean, uh, to uh, hopefully it's not too difficult for you to understand because um, you can also po post a question in Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would like to invite uh, one of the lecturer, maybe uh, of a Design Studio One. Uh, we have Dr. Nancy Golda Yuli and Dr. Yola, Yulianto Prihat Maji. We have also uh, we have also our colleagues, uh, Ibu Sharifah Ilsma Ilya Al Atas, and then also. Okay, please. Uh, would you like to? <laughs> would and see maybe? Would and see? Would you like to share something? Actually, I um, Pak Refi was invited to be the the moderator, the chair of the session, uh -huh. Jung, but she uh, he had to. Or get the second vaccination today, so oh, good for him. Unable to, yeah, <laughs> unable to attend. <laughs> okay. That's more essential. <laughs> uh, and also, oh yeah, Pak Chuchung, it was my. Uh, we are classmates during our school high years, school. high school years. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he he is renowned years ago. for. He's a very talented person. I mean, I think <laughs> making sketches, drawings, as well as uh, what is it, writings. Uh, really, uh, I mean, he's really talented. No wonder, and he's become uh, one of our. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, I, I share you a link to the YouTube channels of the videos that uh, added by. Indonesia.org. Mm -hmm, you can you. find the videos of the Indonesian pavilion there, along with other videos. Thank you. I think um, uh, today's session is not uh, live st streamed in on YouTube, but we will going to edit it, and the team are going to is going to upload it in the in the uh, YouTube our YouTube channel. I'm so sorry for the background noises. <laughs> okay. Um, I was. Ada yang angkat tangan? Oh, okay. Ada. Okay, Bulia, please. Oh, yes, thank you, Bu and, and then next, Bu Nancy. Thank you so. Please, uh, time is yours, Bulia. Oke, okay, thank you, Bunanda. Salam, Pak Setiadi. Um, sorry, I cannot uh, activate my video. If, uh, yeah. Uh, if hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's already discussed before, but is there any constraint of uh, the conservational building um, for the Venice Biennale? Uh, sorry, for the, uh, what is it, for the project? Uh, yeah. take it into account for the craftsmanship so what kind of uh, methodology do, did you use and then yeah what kind of constraint that might be uh, there on the project thank you pak okay thank you bunanda langsung dijawab ya monggo pak jujung makasih bu lia uh, the constraint is not so much uh, strict because the the finish biennale itself uh, has been uh dealing with strange materials all uh, throughout the, its entire history because it started as a an art exhibition so as long as it's not uh, flammable or or, uh, or or dangerous we can we can use everything we like but the constraints is more on the budget and how logistically possible to 
to construct a lot of things uh, in the middle of the Venice because we we have no cars there, only only gondolas and and boats. So the the issue is more like. Um, how we utilize the existing infrastructure in Venice to, to design whatever we like. So the first time we, we, we were actually approaching contractors from Berlin, which uh, specialized in, in uh, digital projection, but they were uh, uh, gave up in, eventually because they have no access to, to, to the boats, which was uh, monopolized by, by Italian ma mafia. <laughs> it was like more like Indonesia. Uh, in Italy. So it was uh, all uh, monopolized by local local contractors. So they can uh, do it easily, but um, uh, if we want to, to uh, appoint our, our own contractors from outside, it's very difficult. And we have to pay a very, very big uh, price to, to, to have simple things over, uh, if not using the, the existing infrastructure. So. It's more like Indonesia in a, in a way, <laughs> but uh, uh, the methodology of uh, actually we don't have so much option back then because uh, we barely knew the, the terrain and we barely knew the how they do business. So we keep simply uh, uh, making everything as 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 neat and as simple as possible. So we decided not. Um, not to deploy so many materials and because initially at the very early stage of the project we were challenged how to we we uh, we present the materials not only in terms of projection but also by the material uh, directly on site uh, like uh, bringing or bricks bamboo and also uh, wood but it would be uh, cost a lot and uh, it will strain our, our budget so 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 much and will actually eventually will collapse the project but the the the, the latest indonesian participation which is, is due this year actually was postponed last year by by the young um, the young uh, team of architects was uh, they intended to build uh, uh, a structure made of uh, wood for the duration of the of, of, of the exhibition for for six months, by bringing the the craftsmen uh, directly from Bali, so it was another challenge, and I I hope they they can do that uh, successfully, because of the of the budget and also the constraint of uh, not being able to do to, to do a lot of things that we considered as as something that is uh, normal here but not normal there or or. Uh, we might uh, have to ask a lot of permissions to to able to work on with whatever we we have here, but it's more like um, uh, it's more like a administration kind of thing instead of uh, well, a part uh, uh, rather than being 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 uh, being a conceptual hassle because they 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 actually allowed us to 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 do whatever we we like to do, but the problem is like the building cost there is a, a bit different from us. But it's not such a different, uh, not just such a, a difficulty. If we have the budget and also have the time to do that. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Bu. Thank you, Pak Setiadi and Bulia. And I think uh, we have some question from the students. And from first, uh, it's from Pahrul Islami. Um, what has to be uh, apa yang harus diperhatikan ketika kita membuat mendesain pavilion dan apa yang membedakan antara bangunan pavilion dan bangunan rumah apakah oh. ada ketentuan tertentu yang harus ditampilkan dalam sebuah desain pavilion sehingga dikatakan sebuah desain pavilion dari mahasiswa semester 2 oke okay. so. uh, ya yeah, pavilion itu sebenarnya uh adalah uh, it's largely a government project. Jadi uh, karena representasi dari negara karena national participation uh, di Venice itu berarti kita harus membawa uh, mandat dari negara gitu ya. Ya tergantung pejabat yang menjabat gitu ya, yang bertugas uh, seberapa mereka bisa uh, memahami 
penugasan ini gitu. Jadi yang pertama adalah tantangan pertama adalah ya pejabat sendiri si kementeriannya ini atau asosiasi arsiteknya IAI-nya itu apakah memahami brief gitu. Jadi sebenarnya kan kita ditantang untuk merespon tema yang diharapkan dipamerkan di sana gitu. Meskipun sebenarnya si pihak Venice Biennale-nya sendiri tidak secara spesifik menentukan harus menampilkan apa gitu tapi yang penting adalah uh, kita diharapkan menampilkan sesuatu yang khas dari negara kita itu satu yang kedua adalah sesuatu yang relevan dan juga bisa di uh, bisa dianggap penting bagi negara yang lain bagi pemirsa global gitu jadi bukan cuma karena kita merasa penting lalu kita pamerkan di luar gitu itu sama sekali nggak berguna buat orang luar gitu Tapi kalau kita bisa menampilkan apa yang penting buat kita, yang kedua adalah menampilkan apa yang dirasa bisa uh, penting atau juga punya kontribusi terhadap uh, uh, masyarakat global itu pasti uh, pavilionnya diterima oleh orang banyak itu. Uh, kedua hal ini memang kadang-kadang sangat sulit gitu. Jadi kadang-kadang kita punya masalah kita sendiri, kita punya isu-isu yang kita sedang bahas, kita punya masalah-masalah yang Misalnya tentang masalah sampah, tentang masalah emisi karbon dioksida, masalah energi terbarukan dan sebagainya gitu. Itu adalah masalah-masalah yang bisa jadi dengan mudah juga dirasakan oleh orang-orang pemirsa kita di luar negeri gitu. Tapi um, untuk masalah-masalah misalnya kita bermasalah dengan masalah perizinan itu mungkin bukan masalah yang menarik buat <laughs> bukan menarik masalah yang menarik buat orang di luar negeri gitu. Misalnya. kita atau juga mungkin kita terpaku pada masalah stylistik gitu misalnya kita punya isu bagaimana mencari apa arsitektur beridentitas Indonesia gitu sementara buat orang negeri luar negeri itu bisa bisa jadi itu bukan masalah gitu itu adalah masalah pribadi gitu jangan dibawa-bawa keluar gitu nah ini adalah masalah membalance antara apa yang kita anggap penting di Indonesia dengan apa yang di luar gitu jadi Dan tentunya mendesain pavilion itu pertama-tama adalah mendesain ya temanya dan juga eh, tema kuratorial yang ingin kita sajikan bukan bukan pertama-tama itu bukan masalah bagaimana mendesain pavilion bentuknya gitu karena ya tentu lagi beda penugasannya adalah ini adalah bagaimana kita menampilkan sebuah narasi gitu jadi bentuk itu sebenarnya adalah adalah apa ya kendaraan aja gitu media untuk untuk memperkuat pesan yang kita ingin tampilkan itu. Jadi berbeda dengan dengan penugasan uh, proyek arsitektur pada umumnya sih. Gitu. Uh, makanya saya rasa ini cukup menarik dan cukup berbeda dan cukup mem, mem, apa ya menantang menantang uh, uh, keterampilan yang terpisah gitu agak berbeda dengan bagaimana biasanya kita mengha, apa menyelesaikan sebuah brief masalah arsitektural. Ini lebih banyak. Briefnya itu kita tentukan sendiri ketimbang ditentukan oleh orang lain. Jadi, jadi kalau kita merancang rumah tinggal atau gedung, restoran, hotel, rumah sakit itu punya brief yang memang sudah uh, cukup banyak atau pretty much the determined by by the brief itself. Tapi kalau kalau pameran, pavilion, terutama di Venice Biennale itu memang kita lebih banyak menentukan tugas bagi kita sendiri apa yang kita tampilkan. Saya harap itu menjawab. Thank you, Pak uh, Setiadi. Uh, do I have a connection problem? Can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, you're fine. Yeah, Bunanda. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think thank you for uh, exp- uh, answering that uh, you had to deal with the um, to balance about how to present the important things. Uh, according to Indonesia, and then also how to uh, that uh, the narrative could be able to contribute to the, the general public. Okay, thank you. And then uh, next question is um, from Cokro Susanto. Dalam proses mendesain sebuah rancangan, sering terjadi muncul stigma bahwa bentuk dan konstruksi sangat terbatas karena material yang digunakan tidak memungkinkan. Dan ini menghambat proses desain. Bagaimana caranya memaksimalkan desain tersebut dengan hambatan seperti itu? Monggo, oh, Pak. Menarik, menarik. Ya, ini pertanyaannya ya antara ayam dan telur duluan yang mana gitu kan. Ya, untuk yang pavilion Indonesia ini temanya memang uh, kami balik gitu. Jadi 
kadang-kadang uh, sejarah arsitektur itu memang diceritakan dari sisi arsiteknya atau sisi uh, idenya. Jadi arsitek itu digambarkan sebagai the the artistic genius gitu kadang-kadang. Kalau kita baca sejarah arsitektur modern itu lebih banyak menempatkan arsitek seperti Le Corbusier, uh, Miss Van der Rohe, gitu, Frank Lloyd Wright sebagai artistic genius yang seakan-akan material ataupun bahkan konteks circumstances-nya itu pun didikte oleh arsitek-arsitek genius ini gitu. Tapi kita sebenarnya bisa bisa berbalik gitu dari di other end kita melihat bahwa sebenarnya itu arsitek itu um, saya meminjam kata-kata dari Pak Eko Prawoto ya bahwa arsitek itu kadang-kadang menjadi seperti bidan sebenarnya. Bayinya udah ada, ibunya sudah ada, tinggal dilahirkan ke dunia ini. Kalau if something went wrong baru kita bertindak gitu. Jadi kadang-kadang kita tuh cuma sebagai vessel atau cuma enabler sesuatu itu untuk diteruskan gitu. Jadi kalau uh, rancangan itu uh, kita bisa menganggap bahwa rancangan itu bukan the, 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 uh, apa ya bukan bukan karya kreatif entirely creative and innovative gitu. Lebih banyak karya-karya arsitektur tuh pada saat ini bahkan uh, lebih banyak yang memang uh, istilahnya dalam tanda petik saya nggak mau bilang mediocre ya tapi ya biasa-biasa aja gitu nggak nggak bukan mediocre lah kalau mediocre itu serak menerendahkan gitu bahwa banyak karya bangunan yang baik benar uh, indah tapi indah itu kan relatif gitu dan tidak uh, tidak tampil secara monumental gitu jadi uh, bahkan yang kita bisa bilang itu bahwa itu baik-baik saja fine uh, benar dan dan tidak apa ya tidak uh, tidak berusaha uh, not not pretending gitu, not pretentious gitu tidak tidak berusaha menjadi lebih besar daripada sesungguhnya gitu dan ini yang yang paradigma ini yang sebenarnya yang ingin kami tampilkan di pavilion Indonesia sih gitu bahwa kita nggak perlu menjadi arsitek yang yang monumental untuk menciptakan karya yang baik gitu kadang-kadang kita cukup uh, peka terhadap lingkungan, terhadap uh, skill, terhadap skill si pekerja, lalu juga bagaimana orang yang menggunakan karya arsitektur kita nanti dengan dengan uh, keterbatasan dan juga bahkan kita mungkin nggak bilangnya nggak keterbatasan bahwa mungkin kita bahkan melihat keterbatasan itu menjadi sebuah sebuah konteks yang memang harus disikapi dan konteks yang kita anggap sebagai potensi itu ketimbang sebuah uh, keterbatasan gitu. Kadang-kadang harus sebuah rancangan itu karena dianggap posisi arsitek itu begitu tinggi, kita melihat bahwa segala sesuatu yang berada di sekitar kita menjadi sebuah hambatan gitu. Kita mungkin jadi berandai-andai bahwa kalau kita saya misalnya hidup di Jepang kayaknya nih insinyurnya nih bisa dibikin kayak gini, Indonesia nggak bisa gitu. Sebaiknya kita tidak berpandangan demikian dan itu yang yang kami sadari bahwa image ataupun asosiasi semacam itu, pandangan semacam itu yang berusaha kami apa ya netralisirlah dengan cara bahwa arsitek-arsitek yang dianggap sebagai kreatif genius itu sendiri juga me- menyesuaikan dirinya atau me- berangkat e- proses kreatifnya itu dari sesuatu yang ada yang 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 ada di sekitarnya bukan bukan membayangkan atau me- me- mendambakan rumput hijau di tetangga gitu. bahkan sebenarnya kayak arsitek McLean itu menggunakan uh, apa ya ada tarik menarik antara ide gagasan dia dengan apa yang dia bisa bisa upayakan seperti kasus di uh, aula ITB itu McLean Pond ingin berusaha me, 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 apa ya me, memakai uh, paten konstruksi uh, laminated arch itu dari Eropa tapi dia melihat bahwa tukang-tukang Sunda waktu itu tukang-tukang yang ada di Jawa Barat itu memang kurang terampil dalam hal kayu gitu. Jadi makanya dia pakai pakai uh, tukang-tukang Cina yang memang ahli terampil. Biasanya orang Kanton itu yang terampil itu menggunakan itu. Jadi itu itu sesuatu yang ada di Bandung waktu itu. Jadi dia bisa melakukannya. Kalau mungkin uh, teknologi dan juga keterampilan orang yang yang diinginkan itu tidak ada bisa jadi dia akan melakukannya dengan cara yang berbeda sih gitu. Saya melihatnya justru bukan sebagai keterbatasan tapi juga sebenarnya memanfaatkan potensi yang ada sih gitu. Semoga menjawab. Thank you so much. I think the the key is to how to maximize the use of its our own potentials. Um, yes. And we have more questions. I think from Mahadevia Arkan. I would like to say thank you for the presentation, Mr. Stiadi Sopati. It was amazing. 
I have a question that may be a little bit out of context, but how you do you create and develop your design ideas? I'm so sorry. Do, design ideas. Uh, develop your design ideas. Create and develop your design ideas, especially in designing a pavilion. Mm, yeah, yeah, it was started from. It was all, always started from the the the, the way uh, what kind of thing that we we would like to to project. We would like people to 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 perceive from from our stories. It's about how. Uh, that's the first thing, actually. What kind of thing that we can we can share to, to, to the general public, to the global communities, and to, to the peer architects and the people who who, uh, uh, who like to know more about Indonesia. And the second thing is not assuming that they don't know anything about us. This is one of the key key thing that uh, every one of us to uh, keep in mind in designing a lot of things. Sometimes we, we have the problem of uh, clients of the government side of uh, more positive conservative uh, people from Indonesia thinking that uh, the outside world is not well informed about Indonesia. Actually, they are well informed and they know a lot of things about us. So we don't have to expect ourselves to, to comply of the explaining things that has been uh, around since the, 20th, the early 20th century. And I, I think we, uh, European people, uh, American people, Japanese, uh, Asian, uh, European, uh, Afri even African, knows a lot about, about us, about, um, about uh, Balinese architecture, Toraja, Batak, and everything else. So when we, uh, uh, when we think people expect those kind of things come from our pavilion, we think the otherwise. We think the other way around, ex, uh, expressing things that not not being uh, being expected from us to do. So we, from the very beginning, uh, we when we developed the theme of the one hundred architectural history, we we looking for a kind of metaphor or allegory from 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 from, from writings, not from architectural ideas, not from forms. But uh, uh, one of the first thing that we came across was a phrase or uh, uh, a simple paragraph from from it was even from I think from Pramudia Pramudia Anantatur about the glass house, the, his metaphor of Indonesia being inside the glass house being uh, being uh, being observed by the outside world. And ourselves being trapped inside, being a specimen as an experimental uh, object rather than being a subject. So we put ourselves uh, uh, bringing uh, that that phrase uh, poetically into 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 architectural design, and we uh, somehow along the way we we, uh, we 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 found out that the the uh, glass house was something that can be put forward as an architectural idea. That's why we devised uh, glass as the main um, uh, building materials for the pavilion from, from the very beginning. So it was uh, being uphold and being, uh, uh, being developed rigorously along the process. So that time was, uh, we, 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 were, uh, we felt quite lucky to, to have all those things that came together by at the end of of the process, but that's uh, one uh, one kind of uh, uh, very particular way of thinking. You can do it the other way, the other way around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, thank you. Maybe this also relates to another questions from Mr. Robi Magzaya, one of the lecturer of Design Studio, uh, too. Do you have specific method to explore the material you use in your project? The materials. Yeah, material use. Explore oh, the materials. In my design work or in the pavilion projects, exhibition uh, projects. Oh yeah, this is not clear. Not so. Bagaimana, Pak Pak Maza, is it in the this uh, pavilion project? Or probably. Or is it the. Uh, we're going to be more expressive in Asia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, di, di project sendiri di project sendiri oh, oh. oke okay. proyek saya biasa-biasa aja pak <laughs> konvensional <Rendah. laughs> saya nggak ada yang aneh-aneh nggak uh, ada yang spesifik sih menurut saya ya ya uh, apa ya uh, akal sehat top dan juga tidak membebani sebuah material dengan asosiasi yang berlebihan itu adalah lebih dari cukup sih bisa mungkin memang saat-saat ini kita memang merancang material itu se seirit mungkin dengan volume dan juga volume itu nanti akan akan terkait dengan bagaimana sebuah material itu diadakan dan energi yang dia upayakan gitu dan juga sampah yang akan terjadi apabila apabila bangunan itu sudah habis masa berlakunya. Saya rasa sih uh, rule of thumb-nya sekarang seperti itu. Buat, buat saya sekarang nggak ada yang spesial sih kalau untuk untuk uh, pekerjaan pribadi. Karena uh, untuk melaksanakan sesuatu yang memang uh, dianggap ideal saat ini dengan spesifik uh, metode yang spesifik seperti itu memang sulit sekali untuk dilaksanakan oleh biro-biro arsitektur yang apa ya? yang uh, yang tidak memiliki infrastruktur yang yang baik gitu atau tidak punya prestis yang cukup supaya bisa men, men, uh, mendikte penugasan sesuai dengan arah yang lebih ideal gitu. Saya sih melihat bahwa praktek saya enggak bukan seperti yang dramatin itu yang ya, atau Yori Antar yang bisa menggiring opini proyek itu menjadi uh, uh, apa ya dengan dengan sebegitu kuatnya gitu. Saya sih praktek saya kecil sekali jadi nggak sampai sebegitunya jadi uh, saya akan 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 malu juga kalau pamerin proyek saya di, dibandingkan dengan apa yang saya omongkan di di, di proyek pavilion gitu semoga menjawab tidak mengecewakan ya. Ya. terima kasih Pak Chung biasa oh, biasa ya. oke okay. Pak Haji uh, Pak Haji angkat tangan Pak monggo Pak jangan susah susah Pak ya. thank you Enggak, ini. So this is a serious question, but maybe a uh, fun uh, answer. Ya, arsitek yang disebut tadi mungkin tidak sehebat menulisnya seperti Pak Chung gitu ya. <laughs> as architect, as historian, and also um, ya yeah, as lecturer ya. Um, Pak Chung, thank you for your presentation, and and uh, I also ask your permission because one of your video. Uh, for FAP, I already play uh, in the first public lecture. It also, um, several weeks ago, uh, about the introduction of FAP. Yeah. Silakan. And and yeah, until now I I have access <laughs> in Google Drive, Pak Tung. <laughs> so, uh, Pak David. Um, uh, memberi jalan untuk itu katanya biar anu biar memprovokasi gitu saya jadi ada satu video yang kemarin sudah saya share juga memohon izin untuk bisa saya share tapi kan uh, dengan Pak Chung ini kan men-share hampir semuanya gitu oke okay, uh, Pak Chung you mention a lot of about the the um, VAB and also maybe for the hundreds uh, architecture uh, bentang uh, about the books you mention about the past tense and present tense as historian and also as lecturer uh, and and uh, architect i would like to know more about your opinion in the near future what kind of the what kind of the um what we call about the application material and also uh, craftsmanship in indonesia maybe for 20 25 30 years uh, later Pak Chung. Thank you Pak Chung. Oke, okay. tuh kan susah kan. <laughs> We're talking about the future. Yeah, Indonesia is actually at the crossroad for uh, in my opinion at the moment because uh, our current government is up for something that has been done, industrialization that has been done uh, conventionally in the Western world and also the East uh, East Asian world. When we went through a phase of massive industrialization in a scale that has not been precedented before, 
following the the pattern uh, uh, put forward by European countries after the World War II, and also in the United States, and probably modeled after the economic miracle by by Republic of China by uh, inviting a lot of foreign investment uh, in a large scale. And um, uh, the idea was actually uh, quite noble that to we elevate ourselves, not only producing raw uh, natural material, exporting them in the state of near, near uh, raw material and, uh, and, and making them as, um, uh, as a half or, or even fully produced or fully finished material to add more values to it and to elevate our livelihood by being not only buying the producer of raw materials, but instead of producing something uh, almost ready to consume uh, in the, in, to, the, to the global uh, uh, consumer products. But the problem is that uh, uh, the, this kind of uh, development uh, tend to 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 be to be what quite destructive environmentally and also disregard a lot of uh, tiny potentials and and future possibilities of uh, whatever we call as a traditional uh, skill or, or communities or uh, you know, social capital, uh, those kind of things. Because uh, this uh, large scale of uh, investment has as a, it's like a big machine. It's like uh, the the giant boat who clog the, the Suez Canal. And we tend to see, uh, architecturally, we tend to see this uh, dichotomy between the large project, the last, uh, the large commercial establishment as something that is like a giant machine who has set the finishing and the starting uh, date uh, so strictly, so we cannot really have a luxury to, to develop uh, things that we call as a local potential, something that is not unheard of, something that we saw as a potential when we design smaller scale kind of uh, projects. But um, because also, all, I'm, I'm doing this kind of thing, so I can't really say a few things about it because I, I deal with uh, uh, the designing or the construction of small projects like uh, small houses and, and development of uh, small commercial projects, which is quite sensitive to, to whatever the, uh, or the surrounding have. But we also, I also have uh, experiences with uh, dealing with uh, large construction and industrial projects. So the, the difference between these kind of two, two worlds has been uh, quite uh, overwhelming for me because we don't have the luxury of the time or the, 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 uh, the opportunity to, to, to develop like the, uh, uh, the potential of like bamboo or, 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 or how to deal, we deal with the, the industrialized material like steel in a large project because we, are, we are, uh, don't have the luxury to experiment with those kind of things because we are very, very, uh, very, very uh, demanded. Uh, the demand is uh, for security and also the, the assurance of things will go right after a certain amount of time. Is so enormous, so we cannot really, really impose that to the to to the architectural commissions. But sometimes in the smaller projects, we we do have a lot of uh, 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 the luxury of uh, trying different kind of methods, the, the trying different kind of material, different, different kind of construction, uh, constructing things. So the future of this. Uh, the way we 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 develop uh, our 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 this thing craftsmanship the, the tradition and the way we build things using certain kind of materials probably relied uh, uh will rely on whatever we we can we can uh, we can develop in smaller scale projects uh probably uh, student works and uh, fresh graduate opportunities with uh, dealing with uh, small structures uh, small shop coffee shop or uh, Rather than being uh, uh, deployed in in, in uh, bigger projects by by well known architects, so I I rather put my fate or the future of uh, Indonesian construction industry and also design to to the younger and the small younger uh, generation of architects and, and 
and smaller scale projects rather than uh, big names like uh, the, the well-known architects because they don't have the luxury to do to experiment or to like uh, I can say in Bahasa Indonesia, ngesot ngesot kayak anak-anak yang baru lulus gitu. <laughs> so we do have, have high hopes for this kind of experimentation in, in the future. In near, near future, it's actually happening at the moment because I know a few, uh, few of my colleagues are actually experimenting with a lot of uh, interesting new materials like the uh, ecological uh, concrete and you know, uh, laminated, uh, laminated uh, natural uh, materials and uh, a lot of kind of things. It's so it's very, very interesting at this moment to see all of these, these things are happening at the moment, at almost the same time. Okay. Thank you, Pak Chuchung. Uh, Paiji, I hope that uh, helped. And then this is, I, I, I think uh, we should collaborate, yeah, Paiji. And in the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for your insightful, inspiring presentation. I think for all the students, particularly semester two students, um, don't worry, we will, we have recorded the session and then you will be able to uh, rewatch in on our YouTube channel. And then I think uh, Satyadi has already provided the 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 qr code for uh, linking to the some youtube videos right past the idea and then also you and then you you can also uh, visit the in the architecture indonesia.org yes, for exploring more about techno tectonic and craftsmanship particularly and um i think uh and also uh i think this uh before we close let's give uh Pak Chung, uh, round big applause, virtual applause. Thank you so Thank much. You. And then, Thank you. Uh, make me proud, very proud, <laughs> because uh, two of my uh, friends, classmates in in, oh. in uh, senior <laughs> high schools, <laughs> <Pak Sini now. laughs> and also <laughs> Pak. Uh, Sibadani Sofian is very now become very prominent architects and urban designer in Indonesia. While well, I'm still like here, <laughs> so, so I have much to learn from you and also uh, Sofian Sibadani. <laughs> okay, thank you. This definitely will be our first and last meeting in UI, yeah, Pak Setia, Pak Chung. We will uh, after the pandemic. We will insha inshallah we will invite you over to visit us inshallah. in Yogyakarta. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, for, and then um, uh, let's give round applause once again. Thank you for all the lecturers and also all the students. And I wish you a, a wonderful weekend and safe weekend. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kemudian Maret materiality gitu ya, saya kira menarik itu hmm. di di apa virusnya <laughs> ke berbagai ya, tinggal pagi aja kok orangnya udah balik ke Indonesia, udah beres oh, udah. pastinya, udah selesai, oh, udah okay. tinggal kita tondong aja. Ya, <laughs> Siapakah itu? David, David, David utama. Oh David utama, oke okay, oke. Okay. Ya, orangnya udah beredar kok dia udah pegal lah. <laughs> udah nggak stres lagi okay. udah yeah. lulus ya dari EE ya berarti uh, udah tinggal udah beres kayaknya sih dalam oke sip 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 oke okay. thank you Nanti so much lagi.
Oh. Oke, okay. ya. sampai ketemu ya. Ya mungkin besok-besok juga akan ya. ada itu lagi ya kita undang lagi ya, Pak Pak Aji ya mungkin untuk yes, another please. session. <laughs> okay. Yes please, thank you. Oke, okay. thank you. Oke, okay. okay, bye. 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 Ya makasih. Ya bye bye. Si Pak Aji Bu Nancy Belia. Ya makasih.